I think because it's a a long uh, journey a lot of the times to become someone who's competent enough to actually make a positive difference, uh, to make changes that you want to see. Like a lot of people think that if they were in those positions of making those hard, tough decisions, or they think they would do the right thing, they think mm-hmm. they would put, you know, they'd be able to make policies. And, you know, we're talking about government, but any position of leadership, you know, people think that they would make things better. And most of the time, that's not true. You'd make it so much worse. That's so and true. I think we have to be so real about that. And, you know, starting with myself, like, I want to see tons of positive change in the world. But have to start by recognizing like if i had to be in any of these positions that that you know feels like are central to actually uh you know have the decision making power to make the world a better place like i'd probably mess it up so bad <laughs> yeah and um you know this is something i see i mean we see this every single time because of uh, it's, i think it's part of it because we have a a it doesn't have to be. It's not written into our constitution that it's a two-party system. But in the U.S., we basically function with a two-party system. Um, and so a lot of times, I mean, every single election, if it's a Republican, every every Democrat, all the way down to, like, the weeniest little, like, college freshman who thinks they know everything about the issues, they're like, they can't believe that that dude got elected and it's just unbelievable yeah. and he's going to mess everything up. It's like, you have no idea what he even stands for. Yeah. Be honest. Like you probably have no clue. <laughs> yeah. what just stop demon- and write down what you know about that guy. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like, tell see. me exactly what you're talking about. That's actually yeah. wrong with that. Um, and tell me what you do differently. It's like, mm-hmm. no, I mean the vast majority of us in our, in our early and mid twenties have no answers for those things. Yeah. And I think it's important to be, uh, to be really, really honest with that and recognize yeah. that it is this long journey most likely I mean, unless you're a wonderkind like that's great and you're maybe you're 25 and you and you really could but for the vast majority of people like you need such a longer journey of understanding yeah. these deep issues um, that's to actually to actually be able to make a difference and so i think a lot of people shy away from that and they don't want to be a part of that journey because it requires so much of them like mm-hmm. i think that's the what something we've realized so far through our 20s it's like this is hard. Like life is really difficult. Like it takes a ton of effort and energy to actually, you know, be on a personal journey of growth to actually become someone competent enough to make a positive influence, Um, even with the best intentions. It's really hard. And it's so easy to burn things to the ground. That's so true. Man, that's so so good. It's so easy to just mess everything up. I mean, the systems we have in place, just look at world history. Like the the systems we've put in place that have actually worked. I mean, you just think about even democracy as a concept, like how really recent that is uh, and and how in just a moment in the, in the snap of our fingers, democracies have crumbled and turns, turned into these horrible horrible situations where millions of people Mm -hmm. lost their lives and suffered incredibly. And so, you know, I think I'm not saying that every single person, uh, you know, is Hitler before they get more educated (laughs) or before they're like, before they grow up more. I hear you. But I think we should all realize like, but they kind of are, but like, but maybe, you know, but maybe mm -hmm. you might be, I don't know. It's, it's not even like, it's not even, I feel like I've never thought of this particular point that we're making right now and i feel like it's actually really important but it's not even like oh you would be hitler like godwin's law says that any any real conversation descends into um (laughs) what is it any real conversation descends into nazi comparisons inevitably and we're here (laughs) so um well anyway guess he was right (laughs) godwin right again um the point is it's not even just about did would you be literally Hitler or would you literally be Stalin? The point is the line of good and evil runs through every person's heart. It's not between one person and another. And so Mm -hmm. there is a part of me that is Hitler like and is Stalin like and is Trump like and is whatever, you know, <laughs> not to, not Whoa. to put him. <laughs> Do we not just throw Trump him. in line with those dudes? Dang. <laughs> That's not what I meant. I didn't mean, um, speaking of I didn't throwing mean our Hitler, politicians Stalin, under Trump. the bus. <laughs> Boom. That's you know, the those trio. three group of guys that have a ton in common. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Um, Obviously, neither one of us actually thinks that. No, what I mean, what I mean <laughs> is just, um, you know, Trump right now is the, is so considered to be Hitler of today. He's so considered to be like this figure of like mass 
um, first of all, you know, ego and just mass like destruction and like evil. And um, somebody told me once, um, Trump is literally Satan and Mike Pence is even worse. <laughs> and but like wow. what, what I'm saying is let's let's get away from the Trump stuff. Um, what I'm trying to say is <laughs> probably safe. There's a, there's an element of there's an element of Hitler inside of every person. There's an element of like it's we're all humans. He was a human being and every evil thing yeah. that's ever been done has been done by a human being. Yeah. And so this point that I feel like is so important is the reason that Hitler went wrong is because he tried to solve the big issue before he was competent to, before he had the right to. That's yeah. that he he took this adopt mm -hmm. responsibility process of starting with yourself with mm -hmm. no ego. Just like you said, it's hard. And the reason it's hard yeah. is because you go from like the virtue signaling of like, I want to solve institutional problems has so much mm -hmm. ego attached to it. And it's so mm -hmm. easy to, for the ego to be aligned with that and be like, yeah. yes, I am moral. See what I put on my Facebook mm -hmm. or whatever. Whereas the real process of solving a problem is no ego at all. And it's like, it's hard mm -hmm. going work. It's personal work. Mm -hmm. It's you just suck it up and you do another day. The alarm clock goes yeah. off, you go, you push the weights. Right. And mm -hmm. so, so what, what I'm realizing in this last 10 minutes of our conversation is like the reason that everything wrong has been done in terms of, in terms of human evil, I'm not talking about tragedy. I'm not talking about earthquakes mm -hmm. and right. volcanoes and cancer. What I'm talking about is the gulags. The reason that happened is because somebody was trying to solve that problem and they didn't have the right to be. They didn't have the competence mm -hmm. to be. They didn't have the moral fortitude mm -hmm. to be in that place. And so there they were and they tried their best to solve it. And they were actually Stalin and 60 mm -hmm. million people got killed because they thought it would be compassionate to take down the upper class people of, you know, the rich kulaks. Let's make mm -hmm. sure that they, those rich people, like we, let's take them down. And maybe we can be all be equal and 60 million people dead later. And, you mm -hmm. know, here we are. Right. 